Rub up your engines! Okay, we got an oddball today. A Toyota Camry with a six-speed standard transmission that a guy just bought. And even odder, it's only got 92,000 miles on it. Now, they made these things from 88 to 2021, then they stopped making standard transmissions. Americans don't like standard transmissions. 96% of Americans drive automatic salt. This is a pretty rare bird. They can sell all that many standard transmissions, but if you're looking for one and you don't mind driving a standard, or I should say manual to be politically correct, these are the ones to buy. The only thing that eventually wears out in most Camrys is the automatic transmission. And then by the time it does, if they have three or 400,000 miles, most people are not going to put another transmission and they'll get another car. In this case, I've never seen a standard transmission of a Camry ever physically break. So if you're looking for something that's going to last even longer than a regular Camry, get one with a manual transmission. And in this case, it's got the four cylinder engine. I also advise buying the four cylinder engine. Now, being that this is a later model one, 2011, this 2.5 liter engine is an excellent engine, it doesn't have problems. But if you're looking at like a 2007, 2008, those are the ones that have the bad piston rings. They can run forever, but they'll burn oil. This particular engine doesn't burn oil. These are not oil burners. The early ones were in Toyota as usual. Found a problem, they fixed it, and the newer ones don't have the oil burning problem. The older ones did. Some people just want a V6 because it has more power. Believe me, with the standard six speed transmission in this thing, that you shift yourself. It's got plenty enough power. You don't need a V6. Now, if you're towing a boat in and out of the water or something, maybe, but in most cases, this has got plenty enough power to get you where you're going and get better gas mileage than what the six will get. You're better off with just a front wheel drive car, better gas mileage, less maintenance. They did make some of these in all wheel drive, but really, eh, my mother had one in Buffalo. I know snow didn't have any problems driving in the snow with just front wheel drive. You really don't need all wheel drive in most cases. Even though it's 12 years old, everything looks original to me. Still got the same ABS. It's still the original alternator. Air conditioning compressor. You know, the only thing that I guess has been changed is the battery. And then batteries go out, right? Everything else is pretty much bone stock. Now we just recently bought it, so we're gonna check it out with a scan tool. Okay, so it's the X tool. IP616 I'm trying out. So we turn the key on and run a full scan. We run it pretty fast, so there's a few trouble codes. They don't look like they're gonna be that important, but we're gonna read them. The immobilizer diagnosis. I bet it'll say startability function. Key code not matched. Well, Starts right up, there's nothing wrong with that. Now maybe somebody tried the wrong key in there, they had a key that was broken, blah, blah, who cares about this, this key works. But keep in mind what I always tell people, you buy a car, make sure you have at least two known good keys that'll start it in case you lose one. Because if you don't have a good key and you need to make a key, it's gonna cost you a fortune. But if you have two good keys, put one in a drawer, and if the other one doesn't work, use the one that works and immediately drive to a locksmith and have another key made. You always want at least two. In this case, somebody probably used the wrong key or something, so. We're just going to erase that one and we'll see if anything comes back when we're done road testing. Tire pressure monitoring system. Yeah, it's 12 years old. I'm sure some of the sensors in the tires don't work anymore. So let's see what it says. It says abnormal communication. So really, it could be more than a bad tire pressure sensor, but really, as I say, get a tire pressure gauge, put it in the glove box, and you can drive around and check your tire every once in a while like we used to. Why spend a fortune analyzing the system that's gonna be broken because it's 12 years old and the batteries wear out, and maybe some of the sensors wore out, maybe the main receiving thing doesn't work because it says abnormal communication. Who cares? Well, the other one is ABS system that has two codes. We'll see what the ABS system says. It failed to communicate to. Now those two systems are kind of related. So I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna get another scan tool and hook it up to see is this a scan tool problem or is this a problem in the car? So now we've switched over to this Autel, Autel Maxicom. Let's see what it says. Auto VIN, auto detect. And it's got the VIN, it read it. It knows it's a Kentucky product here, yes. Diagnosis. Auto scan. Here we go. Now, as you can see, the scan's going through pretty fast. That's at 100%, and we will see. Here's the ABS system. It says it has two faults, just like the other one did. It's got trouble code. So, this X tool definitely fails. It said abnormal communication, so in the garbage can that goes because the Autel is showing you codes. Engine EV control system malfunction and lower high 
power voltage supply. Now the battery has changed. You might have a voltage problem from the battery. So what we're going to do is we're going to erase the codes and take it for a road test. We'll look at the tire pressure monitoring system, which the other scanner said there was a communication failure. It didn't give any information. Data from transmitter ID 1 not received. Vehicle speed sensor error. So at least number one isn't working but who cares like i say carry a tire pressure gauge do your own tire pressure it's so simple to do and cheap you don't have to take all four tires off because eventually all the batteries will go bad the tire pressure sensors are built into the tire stems and they have batteries the batteries wear out eventually you got to change them all take the tires off put new ones in put them back on balance them reprogram them it's an expensive mess a tire pressure gauge costs you 10 bucks go that route but that shows this is a good scanner it shows the info the other one does failure to communicate well this one communicated so that is a failed scan tool good that i tested them out for you so you don't have to while we're here we'll look at the live data from the engine start it up this air sensor is good you can see the long-term fuel trim it's subtracting 3.125 or so percent fuel this is an old car and it's sat around for a while i would advise using some of Bernie's ATS fuel injector cleaner. The fuel injectors probably need cleaning. They're probably dribbling a little bit, which will make it run a little rich, so it'll subtract a little fuel. Now, minus 3% isn't that big of a deal, but I would put the cleaner in myself, and I would drive it and help clean it out. When they sit, they often get a little cloggy, and then they spray instead of a nice, neat cone, kind of dribbly, and that makes them run too rich. And you can see the target air fuel ratio is 0 0.999, so it's only one one thousandths off that's not bad one is perfect 1.000 show you how long the port fuel injectors are firing are normal voltage on the battery module it's fine that's so all you can see zero for misfires it's not misfiring at all no problem with the catalytic converter so let's close the hood and take for a spin back her up you can see he's got a backup camera but it didn't come with one he added this on it's not that hard to add on so where are we going a little road test they're not extremely low cars so we can go over to a little speed bump here nothing's going to drag and off we go to the main road now you're going to hear a lot of noises that's because they have kids and the car's full of all kinds of toys and stuff rattling around. That's not the car. That's just all the junk they put in the car. So it looks like it's all clear in a second. Like I said, with the six-speed standard tranny, this thing's zipped. It is fun to drive. It's a lot more fun than an automatic four-cylinder. Now, if you do want to speed around in the Camry, but you want an automatic, then you definitely want to get the V6 engine. But with a four-cylinder, six-speed manual transmission, this thing's fun to drive. Air conditioning, freezing, cold. I don't hear any bearing noises, any other noise. Just, as you can hear, kids' toys rattling back and forth. Some of them have bells in them. <laughs> Might be old fabric seats, but they're comfortable. And they're not torn. It's got a lot over leather when they get older. Very easy to shift transmission. Short shift. Six speeds, man. You got a lot of gears to play with. Now when you want to go, away it goes. They're really a lot more fun to drive with a manual transmission. Now we've driven around, take out a seat belt. Let's see if any of those codes came back. As you can see, none of the codes came back, so voila on that. And, interesting enough, he bought a CarMax that said they were going to fix things. They said they fixed tire pressure monitoring system, but obviously they did not reset it. So, I've reset it now. You're looking for a Camry with a six-speed manual transmission. If you can find one like this, my advice is to jump on it. And sadly, I would not jump on that particular X-Tool scanner because you can see it failed miserably. The hotel gave me all kinds of information where that one just said unable to communicate, loss of communication. The other one worked fine. And so, here again, don't buy things that I tell you don't work all that well. Let me test them out first. And if you've got something that you think works, send me it. I'll test it out honestly. But be forewarned, if it doesn't work, I'll tell everyone. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Kind of Hunter says, my transmission's slipping. I got a 2012 Nissan Altima 2.5 automatic training, 170,000 miles. I never changed the fluid. Recently, it's slipping. What should I do? Well, here's the thing. If you change the fluid now, it might not even move on its own power. Those have crappy automatic transmissions. You're lucky you got 170,000 miles. It's starting to crap 
out. And really, it's probably more money than a car's worth to put another transmission in the thing. Get something else, because that transmission is only worth so many miles, and I've personally never seen one with 170 that hadn't been replaced already. I don't know, maybe you bought it used and it has been replaced already, but if it hasn't, that's the longest I've ever seen one go. Uh, I mean, if you wanted to try, you could try anti-slip additives like Lucas, but generally with the Nissans, once they start slipping, they're gone, and they're going to eventually just go out and not work at all, and yeah, to get another car. So if it's not that bad now, you might just get rid of it. Or you want to try a little anti-slip additive, put it in, see what happens. Maybe it'll help, but I can guarantee you it's going to go out soon if it's starting to slip now. Sad but true, Nissan makes crappy automatic transmissions, especially in 2012. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.